Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban was a fun game, and I'm happy to have played it, but I said afterwards to myself that for my next big project, I was not only going to do a completely different game, but I was going to do something from a completely different franchise, one that I've never touched before, and so I decided upon this. Metal Gear Solid. Released in 1998, this game is now viewed as one of the greatest games of all time, and I have never played it. In fact, not only have I never played it, I've never pl- I don't think I've ever played any of the games from this franchise. I even own a couple, but I've never played them. That may seem impossible to believe, but I've had some real gaming blind spots over the years, and I am working to fix them, starting with this. It has been recommended to me by so many people over the years that I had a strong feeling it was going to be good. I had to try it. I was fortunate enough to have bought the PlayStation Classic when they were new, and this game is on there in really the original form, or at least the closest you can get, and that just feels like the best way to, to play it, to, to play it how it was originally. The game starts off with a cut theme that explains, well, basically everything we need to know about the game. We learn that the terrorists are threatening a nuclear strike if their demand are not met. The group's called Foxhound, and that's who we're going to take down, and even specifically some of the people we're up against. This serves as a very good explanation as to exactly what's going on and gives us a solid uh, introduction on the game. Once we hit the start button, it begins. We pull ourselves out of the water, and here we are in the base. We're given a very simple first task. Go to the elevator and head up to the surface. This game is good at explaining how to do things with new players. Very good. However, my stealth skills. Gotta be honest, they are somewhat lacking. But uh, This was also the point I learned that I can't beat people to death. That's not ideal. Still, I escaped and got to the elevator, waiting around a corner to leave before dashing in when nobody was looking and heading up. Not bad for a rookie, eh? We get to see some of the area we have to worry about, including a hind, and we're introduced to Mei Ling, who will help us save when we call her. This is also the point we learn the snake is a bit of a flirt. And yes, that is a theme that will be repeated in this game. Hey, guess what else can spot you? Spotlight. Who knew? Fortunately, though... Although I didn't particularly know the game very well, I have played a fair few stealth games in my days. Unfortunately, I'm still not very good at stealth games. <laughs> you know crawling doesn't make you invisible? Mind blown. Anyway, I tried again and accidentally found a pistol in the back of a truck. Sweet! I was looking for a way in which I thought would be up above us, but that didn't work out. But then I found a vent that might do it? I don't know, I time to creep in and see what happens and okay, that was perfect. We're introduced to our old master who teaches us about Alaskan field mice. Uh, okay then, the, the more you know. Anyway, we spend a lot of time in the vents. We do eventually get out and into the main facility. There's a tank here, but annoyingly we can't use it. Clearly we're going to need to go upstairs, so I do that and find a door I can't go through. That's annoying. I find another door that gives me some goggles, which will be handy. Also, I'm, I'm starting to see that I'm going to need to keep exploring to find the things I need, so I'm going to do that. I also need to avoid the bloody security cameras. Now, I thought we were supposed to go upstairs and somewhere through there. We were actually meant to go to the elevator and we were told this, but uh, I kind of missed that and instead ended up back outside again. Whoops. This was definitely not the right way, so I turned around, went back inside, after, of course, getting locked in the vent. Who doesn't? Worked my way down and, well, this sort of happened. Yeah, I'm not going to stealth game, who would have guessed? I do eventually manage to get to and on the lift and then down to the next floor. And there's Look the DARPA the chief. Progress. How we rescue him though isn't entirely clear though, at least not at first. There are doors but they're all locked and then we find the ladder and it becomes very obvious. We get treated to some cutscenes too. The first is a man sitting on a toilet. How lovely. The next is a, is, is a lady who certainly got snake's attention but we don't know anything else about her. Last but not least though we have the DARPA chief and we drop in to say hi. And he explained everything, including the existence of Metal Gear, roll credits, a giant nuke firing robot. Yeah, seriously. The man tells us about three keys to unlock it before promptly dying on us. So rude. We don't seem to be able to get out, but according to our minimap, the lady has, and according to our ears, she's beating the guy up. She lets us out, we spot a naked man, what the hell was she up to, and get a gun pointed at us. We just about managed to get him on side, and then we're attacked. We're outgunned, but fortunately we're able to take a lot more bullets than they can, but it's not an issue. She runs off from us, but not before Snake can get a good look at her butt. 
Oh, snake. Anyway, we're heading to the armory now, which is a level lower. We have a key card now, which lets us through some doors, but obviously we need to get better ones over time. And we find some fancy stuff like C4. In terms of how to get through, well, this should have been obvious, but it wasn't for me. I had to look this up. There were some damaged walls that we needed to blow with C4. You know, the C4 we literally just got here. Yeah. Once I figured it out, that was easy and... Uh, yeah, we get into an area with a jammed radar. I have a bad feeling about this. Bad feeling was right. We find ourselves President Baker, who we were looking for, but he's trapped, wired up to C4. And there's a boss. His name is Revolver Othola, and he's an old cowboy, apparently. The first member of Foxhound we met so far, though. And he's tough. To beat him, we need to shoot him, obviously. But he can get us even behind cover. Our first attempt to kill him went about as well as you'd expect. Could have been worse though, my second attempt, I see for President Baker. Oops. Oh, and I also did it again on my third attempt. Yay! Look, I'm new to this, alright? <laughs> it took a few more attempts. We did eventually beat Revolver off and, off. and then he loses his hand. It's taken out by an invisible ninja. Well, the ninja vanishes again, so excuse the problem. We meet up with the President, he tells us that the lady we met earlier had the key. Great. We get a better key card and a hard drive. And then he dies. For fuck's sake, why do all these people keep dying on me? I'm starting to feel offended here. Anyway, we need to head to the nuclear storage facility, which means doing some backtracking since the big door to leave is in that room with the tank that we were in earlier. I also give the lady a call, which I fully admit I had to find a guy to get the code. Turns out it's on the game case, which, as I'm playing on a PlayStation Classic and don't have the game case, doesn't help. He naturally gets flirty again with his lady because, damn, Solid Snake cannot do anything else, can he? Anyone else you want to hear on before the game's done? Right. We're told about a doctor we need to rescue, and we have another quick look through the armory. I'm also then very, very capable apparently of triggering alarms. Well done, EP. Well done. Next time I use my thermal goggles to see the laser and creep around them. Although it was worth it, I got myself a nice famous for my trouble. That'll be handy later. Like we have a chat with Meryl as we're going up the lift, and she tells us to go through the cargo doors, which will be handy advice for us, I'm sure. And also to be careful okay, so of the lasers. Continuing our trend of checking places I couldn't access before, the keycard gets me to a new area in the hangar. It's also the point I learn I can break necks. That'll come in handy. I get a suppressor for my gun, which will be handy for similar reasons. Another room gives me a cardboard box, which for a second I was confused, but then I realised I can be classic snake right now. I knew nothing about snake before this game, but I do know about the box. That's cool. As much fun as I had playing with my new box as if I was some sort of cat, we must keep moving forward. <laughs> Another room gives me a mine detector, and then it's time to head for the big door. We already know how to check for lasers, but it wasn't too difficult to get through them and out into the freezing cold. A few claymores we have to get around, but all in all, this area seems like it's going to be easy. Oh! Never mind. Spoke too soon. There's the motherfucking tank. And yes, that's the boss battle. Looking at our inventory, I think the only thing we have that might help are grenades, but we need to be sort of, well, close enough to blow them up. And it ran me over. What I am trying to do when I'm not being turned into jam is throw a grenade up there, but I miss a lot. I start getting better because I realise I can just run right up next to the turret and then he'll just throw them straight up. I'm not perfect, but I'm good enough to blow the shit out of the tank. First try too, I'll take it. I also noticed that every boss battle we do, we get more health and more rations, which, which is useful. And we're now in the next building we need to be in. And as soon as we're in the main room, we're told no weapons. Well, that makes this a whole lot harder. Also, it turns out if you get spotted, the guards do not offer you the same courtesy in this. I mean, this is just cruel. It's pretty accurate in terms of what would probably happen in real life, but also mean. Never mind, I can handle a little mean. Or, you know, I'll just die again. Look, I said I can handle it. I didn't say I was good at it. <laughs> you don't need to see the rest of my desk. They're worth several. You just need to see the cardboard box walking upstairs and then waiting at the elevator. The guard does see me, but doesn't actually pay my special box any attention. Snake's basically a cat now, right? I mean, he finds the box, he fits, he sits. Anyway, we finally get down a level, which is what we've been trying to do for a while. One level down, we assault a man in the bathroom and hide in the stall, like the gentleman that we are. Seems like there's no real story progression down here though, it's just a case of running around and seeing if there's anything useful for us to get. The answer to that was yes there was, specifically a motherfucking rocket launcher. Okay, that's a lot more like it. 
This next area though is the whole thing because it has an electrified floor and it's filled with gas. And we're told to use a remote control missile to get through. Good thing we found it upstairs, huh? And yeah, we can control the missile and yes, I did just slam it into the wall. Thank you for asking. And again, look, this is actually quite difficult to get right, coupled with the fact that I don't really know what the panel is. I also eventually run out of oxygen and die. Oops. I do eventually get it figured out though, and that unelectrifies the floor. That definitely a word. Letting us throw. I check the room and find a gas mask, which is actually a big help. I can still be gassed in it, but it takes a lot longer. Anyway, I head to the left and I uh, hear a whole lot of death. Well, this can't be good, can it? No, it really can't. There's like a whole load of corpses and it looks like they've all been slashed to pieces. Okay, I feel like we can be fairly confident who is responsible for this. And would you look at that, I'm right, it was a ninja. And it seems shooting him is a waste of time. In fact, if I try, he just tries to cut me up. Eventually it clicks, melee is the only way to hit him, because he wants a quote unquote fair fight. Question, what's fair about him being invisible? And also what's fair with him then doing this? Nothing. This man cheats and I don't care who knows it. I figured him out though. I knew the melee trick, of course, but it also clicks that he's very cyborg-y, so shafty mates would surely help, right? Yeah, they do. Even when he gets towards the end of teleporting, it's easy enough to figure out. When we finally can't hit him because he's surrounded himself with electricity, we just use bullet. Or while he begs us to hurt him more. This feels less like a battle and more of a kink, but sure, why not? To Easter own, eh? We learn that the ninja is someone from our past, and then we get to know Otakon and I like him. I, I don't know how popular yeah. he is. I, I don't know What's the franchise or the fan base that well, but I actually quite like his character. He offers to help us, rest. gives us his security path and frequency, you. and I'm sure we'll see more of him later. I... Time to get out of here and head upstairs to find Meryl. I head upstairs and there's another guard. Specifically one that's got more of a, um, a jiggle jiggle in their step. <laughs> they spot me and then run to the ladies room and it's Meryl. Hey, it's nice to finally battle. get a proper introduction no and, and of course so Snake flirt no almost to immediately to because he's Snake. Anyway, another well, security path and she knows where to go, we're going to follow her and then strange. she comments There's on no the lack guard. of game music. What okay, this is breaking music? the fourth wall a little too much for me to be comfortable with. Meryl had oh, headaches and she's acting weird and then she wants sex and points a gun at me and okay, what the fuck is going on? Oh! Psycho Mantis! Great! I try to knock her out, but I accidentally break her neck. As you do. Whoops! And again. I'm good at this! Okay, sorry, I'll just use a stun grenade. <laughs> much, much easier. She's unconscious, so it's me versus Psycho Mantis. He insults me and also knows I save regularly. Fourth War has been broken again. And this battle? Just. What? Psycho Mantis seems to know everything I'm going to do before I do it. And just getting killed so easy. I try more than a few different things. They all seem to fight. I, I can barely hit him. I had to ask someone about this, and well, I don't know how you were supposed to figure this out by yourself, but basically, he reads your mind. The trick to stopping him unplugging your controller from port 1 and sticking it in port 2. For those who don't know this game, this might sound like some kind of urban legend. I swear it works. After I did that, he was honestly easy, and he started using Meryl against me again. Stun grenade still worked, and eventually he's dead. His death scene is surprisingly sad and respectful. He actually helps us too, he tells us where to go, which is surprisingly nice for him. Anyway, battle done, and we're moving on, when the game tells me to plug my controller back into the correct port. See, I told you that's what I did. Anyway, we go through, and we find some caves filled with wolf dogs. Great! My plan was to avoid them, but um, that strategy didn't work very well. I did get told something by a friend though, which helped stop the attacks, but it involves sort of getting somewhere I haven't been yet, so it doesn't help very much. When I do eventually get there though, I do it, which is specifically punching Meryl, then hiding under my box and letting the dog pee on me. Again, I would not have said that it would have worked, but it actually did. Didn't help much in the next section though, because Meryl got shot. There's Sniper Wolf. I'd actually heard of her before and yeah, we need a sniper rifle. And uh, all I can gather is somewhere in the base and I'll cut the footage of me looking for this bastard thing because it must have taken an hour. I gave up and checked the guy in the end, but we get it. And PSG1, which apparently will do the trick against Sniper Wolf. We get back and let's give this sniping a go. Well, I'm not bad. I'm not great, but I'm not bad. 
I'll admit, I am happy the graphics are they are, otherwise Sniper Wolf may have been a little bit distracting. <laughs> She's tough too, I unloaded multiple rounds into her head and nothing. But she is getting weaker, and eventually with one final bullet and a death cry, she's dead? I mean, she certainly sounds like she died. Well, heading past where she was doesn't go well for us. We get captured and... How are you doing? <laughs> In all seriousness, though, how is she still alive? I must have blown her brain and heart out several times, and she's just fine. I'm happy to see her, but still. Also, we're unconscious, and here's Liquid Snake! And we're on a torture rack! It's going so we well! And Revolver Ocelot is here too. Damn. It's a nice reunion. How fun. Like we learn wrong. many things. That nuclear Something's weapons are being funny. launched in 10 Normally hours. That Meryl is still alive, inspired. thank god, and we're being the tortured. Oh boy. Degree. Beating the torture is easy though. All it really requires is button mashing. It's not too difficult. Although I am only on easy, so I'm sure it'll be harder on... Well, hard. Oh well, off to prison now, with a very, very dead corpse of a man we only saw die Looks recently. Like well, that doesn't make any sense. Now, getting out of prison. This is challenging. I tried hiding under the bed to see if the guard would like, so be like, Oh my god, where's he gone? And run in, but nah, he saw me. Before long, I'm back to being tortured. I had a bit, a bit of a brainwave next and time I was in the cell, though. Otacon said he okay. would help me, so, well, let's get it's some help from him. The guard eventually had to run to a bathroom, uh, I mean he will order from the budget pizza place, that's what you get, and Otacon arrives to help, but his help is not helpful. We get a keycard that won't work here, Sniper Wolf handkerchief, somebody has a crush, and some ketchup, useful. I do eventually manage to get the guard to come in, but the bugger spots me, shoots me and then runs away again. Eventually I get it figured out, I go pro and I use ketchup. Turned out Otacon was actually useful after all because it makes me look very dead. Guard comes in, I flip him like a badass and then snap that fucker's neck. Now we can leave, heading for the torture room and we get our stuff back. That includes a suspicious item called Timer B. It, it, it's beef a bomb isn't it? Well I threw that away, it blew up and I got out of there and hey I'm back to where the Dark Chief was. After a quick stop to get some body armor on the way, I'm so happy that I've heard people telling me about some of these mythical things. We head back to where Meryl got shot and, well, flashback. I think she's still alive, although at least I hope she. We were told she was earlier, so next step is communication towers, so let's head there. Seems to be going well, right up until the point I get spotted. Oh, we can't hide from these guys, huh? Famous part then. I get some rope and I keep moving and staircases. Oh, I know these. These were from my friends over at NG Plus's challenge video. I also get a ton of enemies. This will be fun. I, I was told after, after the fact that I could run and gun, but I didn't know that at the time. So it was a lot of running, stopping, gunning, and then running again. We do eventually get to a door that's frozen shut. Well, that's helpful. Oh well. Time to keep going up and uh, blowing the brains out in front and behind me. Yay for variety! Once we finally get to the top and run around, I find the ladder and that gets me up and out of there and to the communication dish. I'll admit, I kind of forgot what we're doing here, but at least we're here. <sighs> you think that's a good thing? You know, right up until the initial block of the dish. Remember that hind from the start of the game? Yeah. Snake wonders about what if he had a rope, which we already picked up, but now I guess it's time for the start of the cutting. Makes sense, I mean, you could be great, didn't they? We get ourselves a quick tutorial on repelling, and honestly, this is quite easy. We basically just need to dodge bullets and also steam, which, you know, I don't get that all the time, but the game's okay with that as long as we don't get hit too much as we work our way down. Considering how many staircases we kind, I expected to go down a lot more, but thankfully not. We actually got down to that door, do you know the one we were told we could see falls on the outside? Well, here it is, and I got it open. I then get promptly massacred, which was rude. Missile for the answer to dealing with these guys, I've got to admit, it's nice to have an excuse to use them again against actual living targets. Not against the hind though, against the hind we run, and ooh, stinger missile, I think I know what we're going to use against the hind. We can't get into the elevator, nor can we get down the stairs, but instead there's Otacon. I wasn't expecting him, was always happy to see him. He's going to fix the elevator for us and we can the climb mechanism. up the stairs now. It takes me too long to realise I could just use chaff grenades in the turrets. Getting to the roof though, oh dear, it is the hind. Is this what the stingers were for? I quickly learned the answer to that is yes. I also quite quickly learned that the hind is accurate and the missiles are slow. I did assume I was doing quite well in my first attempt. I mean look, it's over half dead. 
until I blew myself up. I assumed the missile would go straight and then down, like it was a smart missile, but no, it just went straight down. <laughs> oh well, doesn't matter, we have infinite retries after all. The next time I have my brain screwed on and that went a lot better. The hind is down and I guess that means Little Snake is dead. Oh well, I'll try not to shed a tear. Otacon met with us and let Don't them know the elevator was fixed now, which is handy. Okay. He How also then contacts us when we're on the elevator and lets us know that four other invisibility stealthers, like what he's wearing, are missing, and that the elevator is over weight capacity. It takes him a while to put those two together that yes, the guys wearing the stealth suits are on the elevator. In terms of beating them though, that wasn't difficult. Aside from the fact that I can still see them, I can see them really easily with thermal goggles. They're a bit harder than normal soldiers, but not exactly enough for us to worry about. We head through the corridors and get outside, and then I get sniped. I heard wolves, and I, I, you know, was expecting them, but I guess I received bullets because instead of wolves, it's sniper wolf round two. This battle, though, it's honestly just like the one before. I mean, there's some elevation in this area which makes it easier for her to hide, but beyond that, basically the same battle, and I finally get her. I gotta admit, though, I don't really feel good about killing her. Oh my god, this cutscene. I already felt kind of bad about shooting her in the gut, but I did not expect this. Damn, it's like what we had in Psycho Man has been so much worse. And it's made even more worse, even more worse, sure, by the fact that Otacon genuinely cared about her and had a serious crush on her. Oh, I did not feel good about how this went down at all. I know it's how it had to go, we were on opposite sides, she was trying to kill me, but yeah, I'm not okay with having done this. All is fair in war though, so essentially that's what this is, so we have to carry on and we go to the furnace. And then I thought I got a game over, but it turned out it's dish two. I didn't know the game was originally on two discs, but here we are, and I guess that indicates we're getting closer to the end. Anyway, we're in the actual furnace now, and I start off by killing a guard. I then managed to fall in molten metal, because apparently I'm just that good. Next time around, I'm a lot more careful and managed to pull off a Tomb Raider style shimmy without falling off. A miracle, I know. Turns out though, getting around here without being spotted is a challenge, and we managed to get through, thankfully. Finally. Anyway, now we have to go down a giant elevator. I don't see how there could ever be a problem here. Did you detect the foreshadowing? Yeah. We've got another large group of genome soldiers to fight and kill, although these ones are easier. It's basically the same as the last group, but the elevator is larger, so it's harder for them to trap me. They're not invisible, and they're three to the four. I was expecting more challenge being on this too and all that, but yeah, this was really easy. No complaints, just surprising. Next section is a bit more difficult with bombs going off under my feet, but I get to the second elevator without issue. The not call we get are worrying. Our old master, who I've literally not spoken to since the start of the game and he told me to something about rats, <laughs> thinks that Naomi yeah. is a traitor. I don't know if I believe him, but he's also not sure himself, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. Remember this guy? I didn't, but he was the guy who was driving the M1 Abrams tank we destroyed earlier. He's also our next boss. He's really waxing lyrical and spiritual, but he's still going to try and kill us, so eh, I don't really care. <laughs> I've been told to... although I've been told that I should not try and shoot him because a waste of time, so I gave Nikita Missile to go, and, and yeah, it turned out that was the good call. That is one way to hit him. Just so long as the bastard doesn't see them. There's some other tricks that work well though, like C4. Basically anything which isn't just me shooting him. He's still really tough though. I would rank him... Probably around the same difficulty as Psycho Manages? Yeah, probably about that, but one final missile, we do take the bastard down, he gets a dramatic death scene. But it's not as, as sad as Psycho Mantis is or Sniper Wars was, thankfully. <laughs> In the end, his own birds rip him to pieces, it's, it's weird. Another boss down, so we move on to Metal Gear Rex? Uh, are we done with the game? Well, not yet. But we have found him, so we need to get so we need to continue moving, and that involves climbing up and then over Metal Gear Rex itself. I get a little lost and a little confused, but eventually I figure it out and we get to the control room, which has both Revolver Ocelot and Liquid Snake. I thought Liquid Snake was dead. In typical supervillain fashion, they talk about their plans in perfectly clear English, so we know exactly what is happening. The Their plan is to launch a nuclear weapon at a nuclear test site and use that then to blackmail the White House. Seems very risky, but hey, supervillains do not always have the best logic. 
That aim though. Yeah. It looked like Revolver Offer just shooting the key out of my hand without damaging my hand or the key. Seems impossible, but I mean, look, it happened, I swear. We're now being hunted, but I have a goddamn famous. It's hardly like that's going to be a problem. Also, they didn't throw a lot of enemies at me before giving up. Anyway, it lands in the water somewhere, so we need to go down and have a look. We find a lot of shit in this allegedly toxic water. Well, it is toxic water, it's poisoning me. Also, a single camera, but I have chaff grenades. Of course, going down there did not get me the key card. It gets me a goddamn timer bomb with 10 seconds on it. Fortunately, I was fine, but that was luck and remembering what it was, not skill. I eventually find it tucked in an alpha. I head back up to the security room, which is now clear. Well, there's some cameras, but the cameras are easily avoided, and I slot my key card in. That's one out of three. The game, very conveniently at this point, explains how, hey, you can just change the key card into the other ones with different temperatures, which means we have all three, even though we have one. How convenient! Okay. To get the first that one done, we need to make it cold. One. I'm thinking the three, the person they. Also, it's what the game told me to do, but let me take the credit for it, goddammit. Anyway, I was right. We spent some time in the freezer, check the card, and it's turned blue. So it's time for us to head back. We slot it in, and boom, power key to done. Next, I know we need to make it hot, which is the furnace, but we have to get back here quickly, because we have to go through the freezer again afterwards, which could be an issue, but okay. sounds like we just need to get there moving quickly. On the way up to the furnace, we learn about Fox Dive, which isn't great. It's nano machine and it targets and kills specific people, and we learn that Naomi is the one who stuck it in us, and she's under arrest, and that we're potentially dying. Well, isn't that just dandy? We can't really worry about it now though, we step into the furnace and almost immediately my key card is orange. Well that was easy, except the right colour is red, so I go back and spend some more time there until that finally ticks over. On the way back we have a nice chat with Naomi, she seems almost apologetic, which is a weird emotion to get from someone who has potentially, and very intentionally, murdered you. She also confirms that yes, she has killed us, she just doesn't know when it will hit. Great, we can't worry about it now though, we have a mission to finish, so let's get to the room of slotting the third and final power key. That was very easy. Turned out it was also the very wrong thing for us to do. <laughs> Turned out our, air quotes, master was Liquid Snake all along, and those keys didn't deactivate Metal Gear Rex, they activated it. And to make it better, we're now being gassed. Thank god I have a gas mask. Otacon has been helpful with all this, so I call him again and that is the right call. We get the door open, we chase down Liquid Snake. He's going down. Oh dear, the man appears to have lost his shirt. What a tragedy. Liquid Snake is doing that very super villainy thing of telling us the truth to try and convince us away from the good guys, but then he just tried to kill us anyway without finishing that. Liquid Snake talks about inferior genes, but he seems to be the one with the inferior brain. Anyway, it's time. It's time for us to fight Metal Gear Rex. Being that it's a giant robot, rocket seems the way to go. We have a target to lock onto, but Metal Gear Rex can shoot three rockets for every one of ours, and yeah, it doesn't go well. A few more deaths later, and start using my brain. Body armor is useful to stop it hitting it hard, and chaff grenades will disable the tracking, make hitting the thing a whole lot easier, and we finally bring it down. Well, that's what I thought, until we just keep coming anyway, and Grey Fox stops it. I wasn't expecting that. Then we decide to have a full-blown conversation. We learn a lot, like how he actually killed nine parents and everything, but the middle of a boss battle is not the time to have this conversation. We are unsurprisingly spotted, and in an ironic twist, Grey Fox loses his arm, and then we're asked to save him, which involves shooting a rocket, which would have blown him up. But we can't do it, which means instead of blowing him up, he just gets crushed. Yeah, because that's a better fate. Grey Fox's death wasn't for nothing though, because it opened up the cockpit and allowed us to target Liquid Snake directly. Beyond that though, Phase 2 is basically the same as Phase 1, we just have a different target. We get that on our second try and then Super Villain explains everything and tells us how we're made. You don't need the full story details, but basically we're genetically altered test tube babies made from the same DNA. Oh, and the Secretary of Defense is about to burst pieces. Oh, and Meryl is still alive, and now we need to fight Liquid Snake again because... I don't know why, but we are. We have two and a half minutes for this fist fight and this. I mean, this is meant to be the final boss battle, but honestly it's really easy. I didn't know what I expected, but I did think we'd have more of a challenge. When we finally get him all the way down, we kick him off Metal Gear Rex, there we go, dead at last, oh my god. 
Snake. And Meryl is still oh, alive. That's some good news. I've been Die. assuming she was dead for a while. I was happy to see her. Looks nice like bit of flirtation for full breaking there, but we're not done yet. Meryl's certainly impressed with us, but yeah, still more to do. We have an escape to make. Anyway, let's escape. And we're under attack, which is more of a problem now that we don't have a gun. We just beat guys who are riddling us with bullets. All changes once we get the car though. Now we have the machine gun, and now we're getting out of here. I'm not really sure why we couldn't just drive through the checkpoint, but it wasn't really challenging to kill these people. We're home free, and then Liquid Snake? Oh, for fuck's sake, why would you just die? He's not the easiest to hit, but we do get him, and by that I mean we just crash. We crash our psychos for good news, and after all of that, Fox Eye gets him, and he just kills over and dies. Hey, at least he stays off the job. And that's it, we're done. We get onto a snowmobile and drive off into the sunset. The two of them heading off to live their lives, done with the military and all the fighting and everything. And I'm sure that's totally how it stayed. It's not like this game has a bunch of sequels or anything. And we get our final score, which I imagine sucks, but hey, first time and all that. So this is a game multiple people have been bugging me to play for a while. And as you can probably tell if you've been watching this far, I have now played it. So what were my thoughts on it? Honestly, I loved it. I'm sure I could be nitpicky if I really, really wanted to be, but even just thinking about it now, I'm struggling to find any major problems, or even really that many minor ones. The bosses were all unique, all fun to fight, and all satisfying to beat. The areas all had their differences and ways to do things with enough familiarity and enough uniqueness to be the perfect for the match. The game had a strong story, the controls worked well, it sounds beautiful, it looks good by the standards of the time, and it just grips you the whole time. I honestly could not recommend this game enough. Out of all the games I've done like a big playthrough of, this has been my favourite by far. And I did enjoy the others, but this one beats all of them easily. Easily! And I honestly could not give this a stronger enough recommendation. Even if you're looking at this game thinking, it's really not for me, like give it a try. Because I'm sure you'll enjoy it much as I do. I'm sure you will find something about it you'll love. Because I wasn't sure if I'd like it coming into it. And I really, really did. So thank you for watching. And thank you for making it this far. My name is Evolve Pixel. And I hope to see you all again very, very soon.